I went to the South Pole, Antarctica. Anyone ever been to Antarctica? Put your hand up. There's always some, some people. They're fantastic. The coldest, driest, and windiest place in the world. A very scary but exciting place to be. And I was there for two months and I was skiing and I had a penguin costume, which I haven't brought with me today, but I'll show you guys tomorrow morning. Um, now I'm, I'm 26, I finished school in 2008, so I'm going to talk to you about a different kind of route that I took after school. Um, quite a strange route, I studied marine biology, now I'm in Denmark. If you are Danish, come up and talk to me, I want to try and speak Danish all the time. I'm practicing, um, but yeah, let's have a look. I went there to explore, this took me five hours, um, almost got frostbite, but I still have all my ten fingers. Okay, so Chrissy said I ran nine marathons. I've actually now done ten. I was actually in Romania in um, this this weekend, and I was dressed as a mobster. Um, <laughs> this is me and my two friends um, running the Bucharest Marathon. I'm still waking today. Um, so to talk to you about this, um, hopefully you might find this inspirational. A marine biologist running a marathon as a mobster. The Romanians they didn't know what we were. They kept calling us crabby, which which is a Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I had a great. I'm still smiling after four hours of running. Um, try doing a marathon, it's fantastic fun. Okay, so this Antarctica expedition, three years of my life, getting to the South Pole, part of a national competition, as Chrissy said, 300 people applied, and after about six months of selection events, they chose 10 people. And these are the 10 people here. I'm a 21 fresh-faced English guy, I'm the youngest out of all 10, I haven't got a clue what's going on. I've just turned up wearing this, this jacket, saying, hello, my name's Mr Henry Evans, nice to meet you all. I'm the only student there, absolutely incredible experience. A whole year of selection events for the Royal Navy, basic and officer training, put into a ship, the ship's drowning, help, you know, how are you gonna, are you gonna panic? I panicked, okay. Uh, we then were sent to Northern Norway, two weeks of skiing, a fantastic experience, and after that they chose one person, and that was myself, to ski to the South Pole. Now this is myself with my expedition guide, Mr. Jeff Summers, who is now 71. He's been to the South Pole seven times before, so I really learnt from the best. And we're here putting tyres in Northern England, okay? So we spent about 10 hours, over about two to three weeks, putting these big tyres, trying to get ourselves stronger and practice for skiing to the South Pole. And at all times I'm trying to enjoy myself. Putting a tyre, it's quite boring, but you can still have fun, you can play games. At times I did also wear the penguin costume. Um, yeah, quite boring to be honest. So Antarctica, bottom of the world, coldest, driest place in the world. You do find penguins there. And I was at a place called Base Camp on the western side of Antarctica, one of the force, fastest warming areas on the planet, an incredible place, a moving glacier. And I was there for about two weeks. And this is um, yet yeah, the western side. And this is Base Camp. So this is an incredible place to be. Some of these peaks still haven't been climbed by humans before. So this is a fantastic photo, dressed as a penguin, pulling one of the most famous explorers in the world, who's reading the Daily Telegraph newspaper, one of our main sponsors, and pulling all four sledges. You have about 100 people, all American tourists, taking photos of us at this time. So it was about minus 20 degrees Celsius, about only about 100 metres high, so quite, quite cold conditions, but there was much colder to come. <coughs> Okay, so we have a called the International Scott Centenary Expedition, a very famous expedition over 100 years ago by Robin Falcon Scott. But we're part of the centenary, so two people skiing 120 miles, 225 kilometres, and that took us 14 days. Skiing for about 10 miles a day, absolutely incredible experience. We were at about minus 35 degrees Celsius, 9,000 feet high, and 24 hour sunlight. So these three things make for really tough conditions. <coughs> Putting these big sledges, about 70 kilograms. My brother, he's 19, he weighs about 70 kilograms. So really I pulled my brother to the South Pole. And he tells his friends that he came with me to impress all the ladies, so I just say he did. Just to, just to. Okay, now this is the photo, it's at the start of the expedition. We've just been dropped off by this pilot who was Russian, and he spoke no English, so that was quite, quite fun. Um, and you've got my skis with messages from my family. Dear Henry, have a fantastic time. Love mummy. So I spent two weeks staring at these messages. We have our fuel here, our four sledges, the food, the fuel, the tent, the equipment to keep you going, which I'll bring into school tomorrow morning. And the pilot then left, and I've never heard silence like it. It was incredible. No wind at all, nothing alive, no humans within about 600 miles of us, and we start our skiing expedition. Okay, time for a video. <laughs> Welcome to Antarctica! 
I'll try you now. Surviving. This is natural climate change. 
And this is what I call anthropogenic climate change. Now, if we have any climate change denialists in the audience, please come and talk to me later. I love having a chat. I love talking about this subject. It's about education. This is the last 10,000 years. Once again, CO2, we have a new greenhouse gas, methane. And this is what in the US you call a hockey stick graph. Okay? Stable, 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 stable. Humans, bam. Okay? We are now at the highest levels for about the last 15 million years for CO2. And people think we have a debate about climate change with Donald Trump. There is no debate. 97% of climate scientists believe it is caused primarily by humans. Okay? No debate. It's happening right now. We have to adapt and evolve and sort this situation out as a globe right now. Okay, come on to the last topic, just to try and make you laugh at the end. I did a three-year marine biology degree at Plymouth University, Southwest England, and this is one of my most fascinating deep sea creatures I've ever seen in my life. This is a blobfish. As a scientist, you look at this and you think to yourself, why is it so unhappy? <laughs> What's going on? Okay. Is this some kind of proboscis? Is this some kind of nose? Is it drooling? This is how scientists think. How does it feed? How does it hunt? Lives in the deep sea off the coast of Australia. An incredible, incredible animal. Okay, biggest animal in the sea is a... Sorry? A whale. A, a whale, half a mark, and again? A blue whale. Okay, so blue whale up to 30 metres long. Biggest animal that has ever existed. And I've got three facts about a blue whale to finish off. Remember your favourite fact. <coughs> Number one, its tongue weighs as much as an elephant. That's mental. And that's an elephant, the biggest land mammal on the planet, its tongue. Number two, it eats 40 million krill every day. A krill, very small crustacean like a shrimp, 40 million every day. It's a hungry animal. Number three, its blood vessels are wide enough for a human to swim through. Mental, be a marine biologist, it's absolutely incredible. Okay, my business, Magnificent Ocean, we work with students across the world. Here we have my website, www.magosh.com. There's my email address, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. I'm also a published author, called From University to the South Pole, by a copy on Amazon, Christmas is coming up everyone. Um, I've also got 10 copies with me today, okay? Colour, um, and they're signed, come and talk to me, and we'll do some kind of negotiation. Okay? Thank you for listening. I've enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day, and uh, I look forward to the next speakers. Thank you.